guys, it's episode three. I can't actually believe it. We're on the third episode already, Mark, of The War Room. Incredible popularity. People are voting and uh, clicking on the link to the story. It's just insane how many people are into the show. Yeah, I know. It's been amazing. 23,000 votes, I think, from the public on who should be the fullback, who should be the two winners, and who should be the two centers. We're talking halfbacks today. For those who, uh, who have missed it, get onto SA Rugby Magazine. Give us your selection and kind of see what we've picked and what you've picked. The only difference to our team, we picked, uh, Billy, Billy, remember the Billy LaRue and that whole World Cup starting 15 back line are out. They're unavailable for purposes of this exercise. We're checking out the depth of the Springboks and the second string side that would have to play the Lions in a, th- a third and deciding test match. So none of the World Cup box can be considered. So our back line at the moment, Franz Stein. Yep. At fullback, we've got Cebu and Corsi on the one wing. We've got uh, Sergio Peterson's the bolter on the other. And then our centres are Jesse Creel at outside centre. And Cornell Hendricks gets the nod at number 12. And then the fans, they went with... They went the conservative route. They actually picked quite a nice team. They've got Francis Stan at fullback as well. And then they went with uh, Cebu and Corsi on the one wing. They put Cornell on the other wing. And their centres were Jesse Creel and Yanni Saffertain. You can't go wrong with that. And uh, Cornell Hendricks, really rewarded for his form. For the Bulls, the uh, public wanted him at centre and they wanted him at when he just lost out in the centre race marginally by a percent Tiny, and, yeah. and cleaned up on the one win side. And of course, he was a, yeah, run a away, runaway. Runaway pick at, at, at wing, yeah. So we've got a pretty decent backline shape in there at the moment. I love the look of it, man. I did, and I looked at that one up against the, the 2019 starting World Cup 15. I thought, mm-hmm. hang on a second, yeah. we could have a game here. Not much of a difference. Yeah, so uh, we're talking halfbacks today. What are our options for 10? Oh. We're lots of options, mate. We're in South Africa. Tons of players at 9 and 10. The guys that really stand out, I guess, if we're looking at 9. So, Faf de Klerk is out. The guy was riding the bench in the World Cup final. Herschel Yankees from the Stormers. Uh, other options. We've got the old man who's come back to South Africa, Ruan Pinar. 88 test veteran. Uh, I think he's about 37 years old. Uh, and then the other options are, uh, we've got uh, Saneli Nohamba at the Sharks. We've got Jaden Hendricks uh, uh, we've got uh, Kubis Reiner Kubis Reiner in the mix from over in the UK um, we can't pick Rory Cockett he's playing for France and uh, sorry but Ricky January has finally said it's over he's not available after 10 years in France a magnificent servant to the game yeah. wow 47 tests in the Farida Pre area player. if you can do that and the, one of the glorious tries against the All Blacks but Ricky January Fantastic. went to France and became a bit of a legend so did Heine Adams and Norman Yordan also played over there at one stage so we've scoured top 14 the UK market not too many options there obviously outside of Fuff and he's not available right. for purposes of our series but in South Africa Rumpina is back playing great footy uh, we've got Herschel Yankees and um, I'd say they have to be the two front runners for this for this gig well, I mean, you're the chief of selectors, so if you uh, say so, mate. Eh? Let me just get that bolter that I bought him from last week. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, I mean, Ruan Pino is obviously a guy who's been there, done it, was involved in the last Lions series in South Africa. Um, I think he had a, a, a primary school combination with Mornay Stain at some stage, and him and Mornay have walked a long road together. Uh, oh, for the romantics. What a story. We yeah. picked the two of them to come out and do the Lions, not just in our fantasy game, but in the real in thing. In the real world. Mm. I like that. You, you were telling me about how Ruan Pina was on the radar at some point in the recent past in, in, for the 2019 World Cup and decided that he wasn't in, you know, in the right mental frame to, to do it. Yeah, Rassi had contacted him at the same time that he contacted Skulk Brits. And there was talk that Ruan may retire and go coach at Ulster at that stage. Uh, so he was dis- uh, undecided whether he'd come back to South Africa or take up a coaching role. He decided to come back to the Cheetahs, but he said to Rassi he felt... It was more deserving of players in the mix to go, but that he, if he was needed in a crisis, he would be available. Mm. Uh, and it wasn't a case of choosing, I do go to a World Cup or don't go to a World Cup. He was just being true to where he felt his headspace was. But he's been rejuvenated in the sense that he's got that hunger to potentially finish off in a Springbok uh, jersey, in a squad series. And uh, we're talking real time now. Yep. Uh, and he's played well for the Cheetahs uh, last season. And he just, he just looks like he's been there forever. Uh, I mean, plays he has. With, plays with a consistency yeah. that we've always seen. And, you know, many would say we didn't see his best years because they were at Ulster. But even he went to Montpellier for those two years. Absolutely outstanding. So he's someone that I'm always putting. He's a bit like a France stand. I'm always putting him in the mix. Right. Uh, Kubitz Reiner is a good player. A good athlete more than to me. He's a good scrum off. Mm. 
Uh, and Herschel Yankees was outstanding uh, 2019 season. His form been a bit bit uh, indifferent, and it could you know again. I'm too. I'm, I'm reluctant to to out and out criticize anyone who's playing domestically when they're playing three successive Curry Cups. Uh, Spot on. He's from what we saw in his first season of uh, Test footy. He is a big match player. Um, does he provide more coming off the bench? Uh, yeah. Is he a good starting option? Where do you see his his skill set? I'm so glad you said that big match player thing because for me. Ruan Pinar is an incredible player. I mean, the guy's played multiple positions. He's obviously, you know, he's achieved a lot in his career. But I felt like Ruan Pinar is a guy who the biggest stage sometimes seems to be too bright for him. Like, at super rugby level, this guy was kicking conversions to win games. He was clutch. He was all over the place. At the next level, for whatever the reason was, whether it was the setup or the guys around him, I've always felt like Ruan Pinar underachieves at the Springbok level. And to hear that mentally he, he just wasn't in the right space to join the box in 2019 and maybe he's not holding on so tight to that green blazer like he was perhaps in his youth, maybe it makes me feel like he could come back into the mix now. He's almost a little bit less... Uh, tight and, and less sort of anxious about what test rugby is. Maybe he could deliver his best rugby now. But I feel like Herschel is the opposite kind of player. The higher the level, Herschel just seems to really come out of his shell. You know, when he was playing Vodacom Cup and Curry Cup, you know, he was a good player, but you didn't think, geez, this guy could be a, an international scrum off, you know, in the next two years. He gets to the next level and he's playing in, in New Zealand, beating the All Blacks, doing incredible things to win matches. And you just it's just phenomenal to see a guy who's so young at that position dominating like he did in those games. Let's let's we let's focus for on Herschel and Ruan and the contrasting skill sets that they have. Yeah. Uh, in terms of picking one of them to start in our in our uh, fictitious fifteen. What is the primary difference to the way Herschel plays? to how any other scrum off players yeah, well, in this country. I think in that combination so of those two options, I think Herschel is going to be the guy who's the bigger threat around the fringes, uh, possibly a higher work rate. Ruan Pinar is the tactical uh, you know, weapon that you've got there, a guy with a great kicking game, um, offers value in that aspect of the game. Not that Herschel can't kick or that Ruan can't attack the fringes, but I would say if you're leaning one way or the other on those players, Herschel's a guy who could really hurt you around the fringes and in support play, and Ruan is a guy who can move, flip the field, you know, put you on the other, other side of the halfway. If you take Fuff and we go back to the early stages of his career, started well, had that second season blues, had that shocker with the Springboks uh, in Dunedin, I think it was, against the All Blacks. Yep. Uh, got axed, had to go back and think about his game, went to sale. Yep reinvented himself there, playing behind a decent pack uh, where they loved him. They gave him all the support that he needed. And then he got a coach in Rassi who completely backed him and yes. said, I love the way you play and this is how I want you to play. Uh, those are your strengths and we're going to play. We're going to build an attack around that. Uh, if you look at Herschel, has he maybe been suffering a bit of that second season blues yeah. uh, that there is this expectation that he's got to do it? And I think he's also a kid that thrives on that crowd. And thrives on that uh, on the occasion. On the well, occasion, the fifty thousand people there. No one in the, the stands. It's like that's he looks exactly like he's at a right. training run. That's how he looked to me in in unlocked and uh, and in the Curry Cup. That's exactly right. I mean, look at England and how they've suffered now since the World Cup. How they've gone through that dip in form. Like South Africa hasn't actually worked through that. And Herschel's a youngster, a guy with not a hell of a lot of experience. And like you say, he thrives in that big game uh, arena environment. And now he's sort of playing with backups and guys who never played pro rugby before in a competition that doesn't really have a trophy or a winner. You know, so I'm sure it must be difficult. But if we look at our scrum off stocks in the country, so Fuff clearly number one at the moment. Yep. Uh, he's not available for purposes of this series. Yes. The youngsters that have come through, who's impressed you? Oh, mate, I like this kid at the Lions, Mornay van der Berg. Uh, really live wire nine uh, is an option there. Um, Jaden Hendricks uh, uh, looks to be in that sort of tactical mold that we've spoken about with Ruan Pinar. Zanelli Nahamba also all action scrum off option. Zuck Berger, the guy that Jake just brought to the Bulls, looks like a really promising prospect. Uh, those are the guys that stand out for me, you know, in terms of uh, the local scene. And then you look at uh, Ivan van Sel and Ambrose Papier. Right. Two seasons ago, those were the On two. On the radar. They were in the box setup. Yeah. It was Fuff and those two. Have they fallen off the radar? Do you still see them in the mix? I know van sel has gone overseas, mm. but a guy like Papier... Is it a case of that Herschel's just leapfrogged him in the last in the last eighteen months? Yes. I would say yes. I mean, Ambrose, we've heard a lot about his speed and how much value you can add. But have you seen it on the field? Like, where 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 are those highlights? Where where are those clips that show 
what that potential is on the field. So I see the value in that guy potentially, but I just haven't, I haven't seen him deliver. Is he potentially, again, a victim of his versatility? They've played him on the wing at times. He can come on and he can play on the wing. It's more he's an, he's an impact option as opposed to a starting option and that his game suffered, his confidence potentially suffered? Yeah, it's possible. I think timing is everything, Mark. You know, he comes through at a time when the Bulls are at a low and now he's in a pack that's losing and he's in a team that's losing and he's not the biggest uh, bloke on the field. So it's difficult to turn games around on your own at that size. I mean, I, I, I think he's a hell of a potential prospect. I, I just don't think he's delivered yet to really be in the frame for this conversation. So it'd be fair to say, Fuff not available. The top three that, that we'd have to choose from would be Kubis, who was at the World Cup. Absolutely. Um, Herschel, who was at the World Cup. Yep. And a man who's played 88 tests, been around forever, he's beaten the Lions, he knows that feeling. He played for Ulster for 10 years, Ruan Pina. Yep. Those would be our top three contenders, which makes us feel very comfortable. Absolutely. Uh, although it does change the dynamic of how Rassi plays. Yes, yes. Well, what, what are your thoughts on Kubis, Ryan, like in terms of his value to this, to this setup? Look, I think the World Cup experience is, 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 is that can't be lost on us at all. So he's very in tune with, uh, with Jacques and with Rassi. Mm. Uh, he also showed he's very much a team man. Mm. Uh, you know, he left here feeling that he agreed that he should have got more opportunities with the Springboks. Uh, played very well for Northampton. Uh, he's gone to France now. But when Rassi called him, he was very comfortable to do the role that whatever Rassi wanted of him. Right. And when he did get a chance in the World Cup, he looked superb. And there still wasn't any kind of bitchiness. There wasn't any kind of sulking. He just was yeah. there and... You know, I think it was said to him, you come as number three and you will play if number one and number two aren't available. And it turned out that they were always available in that World Cup for the big games. I like him. I think he's a good addition. I wouldn't start with him uh, in that third and uh, decisive test. And we keep on reminding people that our selection criteria is it's the third and final test. It's one all. Uh, Every one of our starting 15 World Cup uh, winning box is out we're trying to ascertain the depth within Springbok Rugby and yep. who would we choose and believe we could send that side on and that they could beat uh, and inform and strongest British and Irish Alliance side. So I would look at it's either Herschel or it's Ruan Pina. I would say yes. I think it's something we have to consider in both 9 and 10 and we have to pick the combination and also think about how that fits in with the rest of the back line that we've chosen. This isn't the primary reason you choose your halfbacks, but something to consider is we're replacing Faf de Klerk, who's a combative halfback, and we're replacing Andre Pollard, who's a very direct running flower. Those are two physical characters. And the options that we've got are lacking in that department, especially when you think about defense. You know, Fuff is that sniper that can go in and catch guys with the ball, tackles above his weight, and Andre Pollard is a guy, you know, doesn't shy away from contact enough, probably. So, Ruan Pino and Herschel add massive value in, the, in other departments, but I wouldn't say that defense is a strength for either of those players. Not that they're weak in that department, but it, that isn't a thing that you'd say, wow, these guys really add value there. So that's something to consider where maybe a Kurbis Reinach adds a bit of fire and a bit of uh, you know, attitude in that department. Um, but I think, it, like you say, it does come down to Ruan with his experience and his kicking game, and then Herschel just with his clutch ability to, to turn a game on its head. Well, if I look at the backs we've chosen already, uh, and again, we have... We're gaining something with Francis staying at fullback, but we are losing a dimension because yes. there's no Billy LaRue there. Yes. Uh, our centre combination is strong, but it's not Dialandi and, uh, and, and Lucanya Am at the moment. Um, we're going to talk the fly-offs just after this, but I, I think for the, for the purposes of starting, I would want someone like a Herschel Yankees who's got energy, he's got zip, he can ask questions. He can trouble right. a, a Lions defense around the fringes. He'll do the unpredictable. And a guy like Pinnock could come off the bench. If it's all going awry in the first 30 minutes, you yank sure. him, you bring this experienced guy on. Sure. Um, to me, that would give us a little bit more X factor in our starting uh, back line. Uh, the safe option would be Ron Pina or Kubis Reiner. Mm. Uh, for me, it would then be we go Herschel and then one of those other two experienced blokes to come off the bench. Right. I, I would have to agree with that. I'm thinking around 10, Cornella 12, uh, and just, you know, the potential of having Ruan Pino, who's 37, potentially Mornay Stano Alton, and then Cornell, who's 32. They, you know, you've got a century of age there between 9 and, and 12. So and I, we play in this game at the FNB Stadium, exactly. Altitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, could be, it could be our guys uh, sucking those lungs and not the Lions. Correct. And listen, this is Herschel's opportunity. Yeah? This is his chance to take the number one job from Faf, who is unavailable. Uh, and this is the shot that he's been waiting for. So. And this is where he 
comes out, plays that absolute blind and says, I'm not an impact player. Correct. I'm as good as a starting option. Correct. So we are, we, we, we've I've kind of exchanged our, our notes outside. Yeah. We're happy to go with Herschel Yankees to take the form of 2019 into this third and uh, decisive test and actually cause the Lions a lot of problems. Sold. Sold. Let's so go. we've got a nine. Now, on to our tens. What are our options? Is that quite an important position? Nas Boerter. <laughs> Where is Butch? <laughs> Joel Stransky. <laughs> Butch, come back. All is forgiven. <laughs> so, Alton Yankees is the first guy on the radar because he was in the box squad, obviously, and has played uh, recent tests there. Andre Polo unavailable. The other options are Mornay Stain, who's been doing great work for the Bulls. A guy you have to consider. Obviously, has played in a line series before. Damien Villipso is at the Stormers. Uh, and Kerwin Bosch is at the Sharks. And let's not forget Robert Dupreer. Bobby Dupreer. Just a guy he who... He just got red carded, so he yeah. might not be available. Yeah, and a guy who I kind of thought when he got his opportunity, I know it was in that, that one game, yes. he looked out of sorts. I know he was a lot of controversy at that stage, playing for the Sharks. People saying it was his dad who was selecting him. Kerwin should have played. Went to sell. Started well there initially. Seems to have gone off the radar. The worst movie he ever made was Leaving Province. Spot on. One of those kids that came down here... And actually just reveled and looked like a test player. Yeah. And I thought he would be a like-for-like -like replacement with Andre Pollard. And you go back to when they played in the under-21s, uh, Pollard's second season mm. um, at under-21 level. Pollard played 12 and uh, Robert Dupree played 10 and did, did a lot of the kicking as well. Mm. And then they were fairly successful. So I think his, his form's been too indifferent. Uh, out of sight, a bit out of mind as well. Yeah, I can't argue with you. Um, if I look at the options, I mean, Mornay staying, wow. Coming back and doing what he's done in the last year and a half and doing it under Jake. I think he's also he's one of those players that went to France under the radar quite a bit because uh, Star Francais weren't doing particularly well. But came back a more rounded player and also came back with freedom and has played in the last 18 months as if he just wants to play out his career and enjoy it. Not with, I must play for the box and score 25 points. Yeah. He doesn't even seem to mind missing the odd kick, which shocks me. Yeah. Uh, he is a completely different player now. If you think back to how he started out, he was almost, I know he started at 12. We played a lot of games at 12 for Henneke, but he was a guy who was almost uh, a little bit uh, hesitant in contact and a guy who didn't really look for the rough stuff. And he's come back now and he's bossing these kids around like he's a 110 kilogram fly off. Like you say, he's, he's, he's sometimes not nailing all these kicks. Um, but he's throwing himself around there like he's 23 and trying to get his first block cap. But he just looks like he's got this worldly experience again. Yeah. You know, having lived in France for five years, sure. uh, played in Europe, you know, and I, I'm not hanging up with him every day. Yeah. Uh, or any day. Yeah. But he, or ever. Or ever. But he just looks like a, such a rounder player. And again, it's such an example for us as rugby media and for our rugby supporters is... You know, Eddie Jones said it once. He said, we find a Larkham at 21 and we want him to be Larkham who was Larkham at 30 right. or 29. Right. That guy was coached for 10 years to be Stephen Larkham. Yeah. We see a Johan Gerson and we, Heineke says he could be better than Dan Carter. Hang on a second. Let him play 100 tests and we'll make the comparison with Dan Carter. And the guys tend to go off and, and we say underachievers. Uh, we thought they would have done a lot better. Uh, so when I see a Mornay Stein, I'm like, go overseas to the youngsters. Hold on. Uh, Find out about yourself, find out about the world, and come back and play here again. Mm. And, and then give back to the, to, to, to the next generation. Mm. So I'm hoping that Johan Gerson, now that he signed for the Bulls, will give Jake a little bit of that and remind the South African rugby public of how talented he was as a youngster. Um, if he's mentally settled, he's in a good environment, uh, we could see him coming through. I think it's too early to throw him in in this, uh, in this third and decisive test. I don't think Kerwin Bosch is good enough as a test player. No. Um, Not a 10 for me. Wonderful uh, talent. We said that when we spoke about fullbacks. Go to France, Kerwin. Get loads of money. Le boot. Le boot. And they'll write about you every week. And you'll, yeah. be in, you'll be one of the superstars of the game and very wealthy. As a test player, I just think he has... There's just something that's just not there. And one of that is that he can't tackle. It's defense. Okay, it's defense. Yeah. And you don't get away with it in the big, in the big test games. And if you're talking the spring box... You're defined by your tests against the All Blacks, against England, against the Lions, and potentially against a, uh, an Irish and Australian side if they're good. Mm. Um, Wales, I don't know about yet. And France, who knows? But 
it's those big three games, and that's where I think Kerbenbosch would be found out. Yes. So I'm taking him off the radar. I don't know if you're comfortable with that. I'm very comfortable with that. I'm taking... Um, Talk to me about Alton. We're, so, we're getting to Alton, okay. eh? We're okay. getting to Alton, because I know there's a lot of Alton fans out there. And Alton, for me, is I look at Alton, I see Carlos Spencer. And I grew up in the Carlos Spencer, Andrew Mertens area in New Zealand, and it Beautiful. was just... One was Canterbury, one was Auckland, one had it all. The Maori boy with the tattoos and the charisma. The banana kicks. The other, the pale kid from down south, happened to be born in sunny Durban, uh, left after six months. But the one guy just had big match temperament. He knew how to control a game. Spencer did things Mertens would never do in his life. Yeah. But he also did things that Mertens would never want to do in his life. Yeah. So I see Alton uh, do so many wonderful things for the Lions. And do so many wonderful things for the spring box when the heat's not on. But I've never quite seen him do, seen him do it for the, the box. Charge. Yeah. Just when you think he should. Yeah. And, you know, that day, I know the weather conditions were awful. And Rusty changed a lot of the team for that third test against England at Newlands. Yeah. And Ciprihani had that blinder for, for England. But it just fell apart for Elton that mm. day. Mm. Every p- potential mistake he could make, he did. Mm. And, unfortunately, when you think of Elton, you don't tend to think of the... 81% success rate. He's a bit like Bowden Barry. To think of the three kicks he missed. Right. Uh, you don't seem to think of the go and show. Mm. Or the show and go. Mm. The kind of delayed pass. The mm. fantastic... Uh, uh, I mean, he, he, he throws such a wonderful drift pass as well. That his runners like run onto. You just think of that tackle he missed. Or there's always a failing about him. And yeah, it seems yeah. to come out it's in a big a clean, game. never a clean performance. Never a clean performance. Yeah. And I would be reluctant to put him in mm. with a Herschel Yankees. Right. If it was a Ron Pinot 9, I would still potentially say yes, mm. Alton at 10. Mm. But we've gone with Herschel, mm. and that's where my leaning would be towards the experience of a Mornay Stone. Um, and if you've got a Ron Pinot on the bench, he covers 9 and 10 as well, and the goal kicking. Mm. Um, and, and that kind of like answers a lot of questions for us, and especially the close goal kicking, because that's where Franz Stein has proven at times to be a little bit vulnerable yes. in big games. Yes, that is true. So yeah, I mean it's. Uh... So look, I I I think Alton's left boot and his and his values contribution on attack would add massive value to what the box want to do, especially in terms of picking up the slack left by Vili leaving and Franz at fullback. But again, I'm with you on all those points you raised. Uh, just physically. I worry about the guy we pick at 10 because we've got quite a finesse backline combination. Uh, I feel like you have to go with Mornay. He's got 66 test caps. He's 36 years old. This is the guy that beat the Lions the last time they were here. He's playing on the high felt again. He's in form. I think you have to go with him. I'm going to do the asterisk again and mention my guy, Damien Willemser, because if there's one guy that can plug into that spot at 10 and actually drop somebody down with a big shoulder, he's, he's the kid for that. I just think it's probably a little bit too early to be throwing him in to such a massive game at 10 uh, in this back line. Well, you're throwing him in there now. How do we debate him? Yeah, it's a difficult one, man. We've been conservative with our back three, okay? Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've gone with experience in that. Is this one of those things we say to the Lions, we are, we've got cover on the bench? Say Ron Pino is but our... 70 years of cover on the bench and Ron Pino and Mornay Stein. And we say we're going to throw two kids at you. Yeah. Nine and ten. I mean, it worked for Nick in uh, 98. <laughs> it's a one-off test. <laughs> and you give those kids the freedom yeah. to play it as they see it and thinking to yourself, if it all goes to pot in those first 30 minutes, well, they're not going to see the last 50. So you know, when, when yeah. I watched Dampy Williams play for Paul Riss yep. and Jordan Child was playing for Saks. Yes. And they both made one made province and one made province country, whatever. Some bloke tweeted when he saw Jordan Child play, said, if you're leaving him out of the province team... There's got to be a hell of a good fluff in the Western Cape. Right. And it was, Dampy Willemser. I mean, just an outstanding fluff. Those first few matches he played for Province in that Curry Cup, that one try he scored against the Bulls at Newlands. Uh, the first year in Super Rugby. And that's why we thought he could potentially be a 12. Mm. Physically, he stood up. He had yes. arrogance. He had attitude. But I don't know if that was the schoolboy coming through. I own schoolboy rugby, and now I'm owning this. And now when he's looked up and thought, hang on a second, these are big boys. Uh... I can't actually have that attitude. He seems to have lost a bit of that confidence. And that playing in between 15 and 10, and does he play potentially at 12? I think it stuffed him up a little bit, but I like him as a 10. Love him. Um, when he went to Saracen just for that, that brief spell, already started saying he could play. I like that Damien Willems bolter at 10. I'm glad to hear you say and, that. And uh, I think the, the likes of Stain and Pino give us comfort. Yes. 
This is a starting 15 we're picking, but they would definitely be in our equation on the bench. Yes. So I'm happy. Are you confident with Francis Stein kicking to goal? Tough. He's done it for the Cheetahs now since he's come back. Right. And I think Francis Stein is such a different player now. He really has taken on that mantle of senior statesman. And he's happy to mould the youngsters. And I just looked at how he's played. He's been kicking at 82% for, for the Cheetahs. Yep. Banning them over from everywhere. And not just taking the 65 meter kicks and one out of three and 70 meter drop goals if it goes over, it doesn't. Yep. There's a lot more responsibility and I think a lot more appreciation in his game that this is the last 12 months and then that's the end of a career. So a kid who came on the scene at 18, won a World Cup at 19, may not have always had that appreciation of just how tough it is. Yep. And now may find, and I, just from what I saw at the World Cup and seen now, he's got that. Yep. So I'm comfortable with that. I love the fact that you brought Damien in at 10. Uh, he's been in the box setup for the last two years, and I'm willing to give him my vote. So I'm thinking that that, that Lions lose trio, that pick up of the base of the scrum, or they're attacking a block back line that's got Herschel at nine, Damien at ten, and Cornell at twelve. I think that is a much better set for us than to have Mornay staying at ten in that same combination. I think there's more value for us there. I think we could uh, move Damien around. You know, defensively you could be at ten on attack. We could always bring Franz Stein in at first receiver and have Damien fill Villy's role. Uh, I think there's ways to work around it to take some of the heat off the kid. Uh, like you've said, Franz Stein can kick, kick the points. Um, and I just think in the kicking game, if Damien's back there taking those kicks uh, in positions where we can counter-attack, he's obviously a much more dynamic threat than, than Mornay would be. So, so big double ticks for me for, for Damien at 10. You've convinced me again, but that's why you're chief of selectors. So we're going with... Damien Willems at 10, Herschel Yankees at 9. And our, our backline looks... Cornell Hendricks at 12. Jesse Creel at 13, Sabun Corsi and Sergio Peterson on the wings, and Franz Stein at fullback. Liking the look of it. A lot of pace there with Sergio, and then a lot of firepower. Playmaking ability. At 9 and 10. Yeah. Both also excellent steps. Fantastic. All right, Zells, it's been a pleasure. Nice, Mark. Let's see what the public votes. SARugbyMagazine.co.za. It will be up uh, on the polls. 23, 24,000 votes for the, uh, for the outside back positions. And the midfield, let's see what your votes are. Are you going to go with youth? Damien Williams, sir, Herschel Yankees. Are you going to go with the old men? Ruan Pina or Mornay Stan? That's it. <laughs>